If you're doing the same bodice color, like on mine right here, so this one, I've already done most of the covering. Let me wipe my fingers because I'm changing clay colors, so I want to make sure that I don't add a bunch of blue onto my darker color here. So I've already added on this part um, and I'm gonna finish off the back the same way, but I wanted to show you how I did kind of the more corset area. So for that, um, really you just kind of start with a basic shape. So this one kind of looks like a tank top. Now I already kind of um, checked and this is a pretty good shape. I'm gonna cut it out again because I conditioned this clay. So I squished it and you know rolled it out a couple times. Um, so it's nice and soft. This one I saved from earlier, so it's stiffened up a bit. So if I tried to use that other one, it would probably crack when I went to go wrap it around. So I'm starting with, like I said, the little tank top shape. So I'm gonna kind of check it and see, like does it kind of fit on here where I want it to? Cause I want there to be a fairly you know, wide opening because I think that looks nice. So now it looks kind of like a bib. So I'm gonna lay it on there, kind of gently start pushing it down and around to kind of make it start to match the, the form that I have underneath. And then again, I'm gonna kind of push it in the middle and then it's just clay, so it bends. So I'm just gonna kind of start pushing the polymer clay around to show that waist that the La Katrina is so kind of famous for. Because if you don't have any internal organs, you can have a really skinny waist, right? So here's what it looks like on the back. Now, for me, I'm gonna do some detailing around the edge because I don't want this area to show. So I would wanna kind of patch that in. And keep your tools clean also as you go. Okay, so I'm gonna, let's see. So if I add this in right here like this, because I don't want any of that area, like I don't want the edge of my bones to show, I want this area to be the darker color as well. So I'm just gonna kind of patch it in and blend it. So it's the same thing. I'll do the same thing on this side. I'll add a little patch. I'm gonna um, trim off a little bit of this area right here to make it a little smoother of a transition. I think I might have this one be more of like a V in the back, but I wanna make sure that I have a nice even area to work with to start with. So I'm gonna pull that off. Okay, so for my V, I'm just gonna cut a couple triangles. Let's see, like that. And then think I'm just gonna lay them in like this. And like I said, if there's any extra or there's a blank spot or gapping or something, you know, it's just clay. So you can either pull it off and try it again in a different shape, or you can just squish it around, right? You can always patch and add things as you need. So there's that side. And then, oops, I'm gonna do the same thing on this side and now I've got that kind of v-shape going and I like the little v-shape I am going to fill in right here though just because um, since I don't have a bone right there then I'm just going to take a little teeny piece of the clay to smooth in right there just like that so now the rest of this um, I could add a little bit more around the top to show the shoulder straps uh, and make sure that the shoulder straps come back around. So if I'm gonna do that, I would just take a little piece like this and kind of wrap it over and around and blend that as well. And then one thing that I like that I've done on some of my other ones is I kind of like having a high collar. Now this one, cause I have the low back, it would be kind of weird to have a high collar and I would just, I would just repeat this on this side to give that um, shape right there. But I, I do like the high collar, so if I didn't have a backless dress, then uh, if I wanted to make a high collar, it's kind of a weird shape. So you have this weird, like a big curve, and then you have a spot for the arms, and another spot for the arms, and then you have kind of a flat part right here. So the shape 
is kind of similar to that. Now you'd have to do some fiddling with it to make it work, but what happens for this is these little pointy areas go over the shoulders and the long part goes in the back. And so these would get smoothed down and tucked in along this front edge here. And then this area, you can see why, you know, it doesn't work for a backless dress, but this area would get smoothed in with the back of the dress if you wanted to have something like a high collar like that. So I kind of think of it as like a Maleficent or something like that. Um, other things that you can do, you can add on little uh, folds in the fabric and stuff. And usually you start off with your fabric like this where it's all nice and smooth. And then if you wanted to add in little areas where the fabric is pulling or little decorative like, you know, puffy areas. So once it's all nice and smooth, pretend I smooth that, uh, that's where all those little bananas come in. So you start with a little coil, you blend it down on the edges to make that kind of pointy tapered coil look. And then that would go, usually you make a series of them. So you add it on like this. So it looks like that from the side. You flatten it out just a little bit to make sure it's good and stuck on. And then you would just blend just from one side like this. And then you kind of roll it just a little bit. So you would need to spend a little bit more time on this, but I just want to show you. And so if you layer those and you have, you know, one, two, three, it'll look like the fabric's gathering in that area. So if you choose to do something like that, just think about where are the folds in the fabric going to be, right? Now, like this one, I was trying to make it look like the leg is coming out a little bit, and I want this to look like it's opening. So to do something like that... I'm going to create a big long piece like this. And remember, you can always, you know, if you don't like something, you can always take it off and try it again, right? Okay, so this piece I'm going to make into kind of like a um, ruffly area like that. So for me to do that, I wanna start with kind of the ruffle going at the top. So I'm gonna kind of create that little shape like that. And I'm gonna pinch kind of at the bottom. So I'm just like pinching right at the bottom just to kind of hold that shape. And then I'm gonna set this kind of down. This is hard to do while I'm holding it on the camera. And I'm gonna continue adding in some little ruffly edges. So you can kind of see like some of the little ruffles here. And the main thing is, is you just wanna keep this edge really good because anything else you can kind of fix after the fact. It's just this edge that you wanna kind of watch out for. So I'm just kind of folding it again. Okay. So this is kind of the big opening. Now, if I like it this big, I can just blend in this side into the rest of my dress and just blend it in all the way along the edges and that'll look like that. Now, if I want to, like if I'm like, oh, that's too big or if I wanna you know, trade and add more wrinkles or less wrinkles, I can do that too. I just have to do it before it's baked because once it's baked, then it's um, permanent. But until it's baked, you can take it off and you can change it and you can try a different shape. So like for me, this looks a little big. I might thin out this little top a little bit before I permanently stick it on there. But it's just, it's just all blending from that point on once you have the shape that you like. You just blend the extras. All right, so we've covered corset. We've covered how to cover the dress. We've looked at some ruffling. We've looked at some shoulder straps. We've done a big ruffle, um, how to blend against another edge, and how to do a big old collar. So I think that's about everything. Thanks, everybody.